You'll recognize him when you see his picture. Folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome aboard. Between the rolls, we're going live. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit with us, join us on our Discord channel. If you want to buy stupid shit like this phone case, it's down there. Uh, most importantly, if you want to have a seat on the talk show or on any of the one shots this coming month, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, go ahead and join us. Uh, shout out to our Pirate Dog Dice and our OddFishGames.com sponsors. Uh, remember, if your game stinks, uh, pick up a little adventure sense from uh, OddFishGames.com. And if you want to learn how to write way better than Kyle, uh, check out their Shine system. Uh, and then you can be almost to my level because I'm just a fucking wordsmith. <laughs> uh, folks, this is Between the Rolls. Uh, you certainly... Uh, if you've seen this show before, recognize our panel. But let's go ahead and introduce them. Uh, first off is David. David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm David. Uh, I'm part of the Cacophony show <laughs> on Thursday nights and usually here on BTR. Um, yeah, I play Zadar on Cacophony and random other characters on One Shots too. So that's me in a nutshell, folks. Nicely said. Uh, I'm having fun roaming with my wireless. Yes, he he's going to get out You're there. You're worse though. than I am. Jeez. That's right. No, I'd be doing this. And uh, next, next up is Kyle. Hey, oh, hey there, everybody. How are you doing? <laughs> uh, this one. <laughs> what is it? Um, oh, hi. I am Kyle. <laughs> I, um, I play games. I DM sometimes, and I come up with really good ideas for between the roles. Now, yeah, pretty, that, I'm, that you I'm do. The, I am the backbone of Murder Hobo, and Frank is the fat, gutty. <laughs> I'm the face. <laughs> That's true. Oh, Lord. That's your intro? That's what you're going to go with, huh? Yeah, that's it. That's all I'm going to go with. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, the rose next to two, three thorns, our youngest murder hobo, probably our most vicious and hateful hobo, who is performing in front of a live studio audience tonight. Uh, Caitlin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm going to keep myself on mute until I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> Say something funny. Push Quick. the talk. Make the studio audience laugh. <laughs> Three old guys. <laughs> yeah, three old guys. Uh. <laughs> it is what it is. That could be a show. No. I. What? Yeah, I ran Blue Rose the other day. Sorry, I'm so It's stupid. three yeah, men and a baby <laughs> 20 years later. <laughs> no, <laughs> Gee, no she has no that. idea what okay. that is. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> No, 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 this is the Here's the ghost behind me. There's Hannah. Hannah and Cosette. Uh, Caitlin did run Blue. Yes, Caitlin ran Blue Rose for us. We're going to go ahead and do an in depth discussion on that in just a few minutes. First, let's go ahead and get you caught up on the two other games this uh, past week. Episode 183, Navidad Pass, in which both David and Caitlin participated in, was part of our Cacophony episode. However, it was a one-shot. David, go ahead and give us a brief overview on what you guys did. Please. All right. Well, that was uh, that was a fun Christmas show. <coughs> we got invaded by a 12-year-old on the show. So, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the title that we call it? Something Navidad or uh, Navidad Pass? Navidad Pass. Uh, it opens up uh, with us in a, in a snowy town, uh, <laughs> cold, blustery Christmas Eve night, and uh, the mayor <laughs> breaks in and says, "We need your help." So our three intrepid uh, adventurers just. Uh, <laughs> Set out to go rescue Santa. I mean, anything from anything that could happen, like from fighting with ice, ice Memphis that explode and damage the shit out of you, to fighting an ice troll, to finally surviving a ride in Santa's sleigh. <laughs> clauses, 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 clauses. Trademark, trademark. It. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Don't sue us. But uh, anyway. 
culminated it was a lot of fun it really was i mean anything from a dragon pooping on us in a caldera of a volcano cold volcano right in the middle but yeah yeah the lesson to be learned do not feed a dragon donuts so there we go you don't that many fucking donuts <laughs> <laughs> but if oddfish games is uh watching i've got a I've got an idea for you. Adventure Sense, Adventure Soaps. We always end up getting filthy on our um on our episodes, always use press the digitation. Gonna, like, we didn't have it this year. <laughs> we didn't have it. Future David stream. Like he's gonna be in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> no, nice. we are not going to watch that. <laughs> We're not going to watch that ever. <laughs> I like the reviews of so I'm just imagining him lounging in a bathtub, one <laughs> naked leg hanging out of it, dangling a couple of lit candles. How can real? And we'd like to thank our sponsor, Oddfish Games. Yeah, Adventure Games. <laughs> oh, the bubbles seem to be popping, boys and girls. <laughs> this show's just gone. We'll have to add some more hot water. <laughs> uh, Caitlin, you also Steamy. played a Navidad Pass. What'd you think? It was fun uh, playing a Janazi, Ray Janazi. Yep, Air Janazi. Very interesting. You don't have to breathe. So that's, I don't know, a weird concept to have. But it was a fun game having, again, on one shot, although you still like love your characters, you don't want them to die as you're like, oh my God, I'm going to die at any moment. Taking the one health potion. <laughs> yeah, the one and only health potion we had. <laughs> having a group of just healers. <laughs> You guys were just a bunch we of were taking balls. like a shit ton of damage for for a group of just healers. It's just like we're getting knocked down to like seven hit points, you know. Okay, try to heal this time. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> Mr. But, Floss was good for the DM. Uh, Air Genasi, I would have thought there would have been more of a benefit to it. Aren't they resistant to cold because of the air? There's, there's some. Yeah, I don't have like the book on it so i was trying to like, google it but they do say there is like a resistance like obviously if you have a fire jazzy your resistance to fire water would have been a terrible idea it would have been a giant icicle oh yeah frank would have clobbered us with that yeah, yeah. well and- i i gave her advantage on her uh constitution saves oh okay there we go yeah very good oh uh, yeah not- like at least one i should oh i guess then you can't go in the desert if you exist <laughs> oh, you can. It's just gonna suck for you. <laughs> and then uh, give you the idea for your gelatinous cube <clears throat> with the ice spikes in it. Yay! That's true. Next time. <laughs> Although you can see it, so that's gonna be a drawback. Folks, that was episode 183, Navidad Pass. Episode 184 was the Blue Rose. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. I'm going to give a quick overview on 185, the Orsina Cup. Uh, We did a one-shot with the Tri-Generational group, and they were all individual members of the dog sled team going around a circuit. I allowed them to screw over each other as best they could. Uh, If any of them were involved in an altercation, it was up to the other participants in the area whether to help or not. Strangely, none of them helped their loved ones. I'm envisioning Uh, Mario Kart right now. (laughs) uh, And we discussed that, and I should have given them uh, magic uh, turtle shells or bananas. Uh, (laughs) Next time, I will do that. Uh, Spoiler alert, the winner was Grandpa. Frank Sr. won the Orsina Cup inaugural race, much to the chagrin of his sons and his grandsons. Uh, It was pretty good. All of these three episodes are in the archive. Uh, They are not yet on our audio-only podcast, tinyurl.com and Hobo Inc. Audio. Uh, If you don't want to look at us, uh, you can always just listen to us. There are 90 episodes out of 200 and... 81 <laughs> uploaded. I'll continue to upload. Uh, we want to showcase uh, Caitlin's initial. Yes. Hey, of course, it's waving for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a face for podcasting. Wow. Just get the, just I think get we the all, all about. three of us do. <laughs> uh, we're going to well, showcase don't Caitlin's. Don't say something bad like that about Caitlin. Oh, uh, Caitlin's first uh, time in the big chair on Murder Hobo Inc. was with Blue Rose, 
Not a D&D game, but a variant RPG. Let's turn it over to Caitlin. Caitlin, give us a background on what Blue Rose was all about, and then you three can go ahead and discuss how the game went, since two of the four participants are sitting here. Caitlin, over to you. Yeah, I mean, Hannah just walked away to get some wine, but... <laughs> I need some wine too. Oh, I, I, I need, I need, s- yeah, yeah. I, I need a what they call them, like studio tech or something like that. Come bring me wine or whatever. Yeah, no yeah. An intern. An intern. <laughs> there we go. We'll we need interns. You. But um, sorry. Ooh. 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 <laughs> All right. Yeah. So first time ever. <laughs> GMing technically because uh, narrator not a dungeon master. Yeah, just I was about to say narrator. What? You were narrator. You weren't a GM. <laughs> a that's narrator? what they. Yeah, that's what they called it in the rule book. Narrator. See, this is what I have to contend with every episode, Caitlin. <laughs> this is the person who didn't read the book, who read the adventure. <laughs> Wait, I was a narrator. Where does it say that? <laughs> the book. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. I was just watching a show called Bridgets and whatever. <laughs> Why is here? We can't yeah, read that. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, you know what? I just don't read things. I just scan it. I just <laughs> she, it. she scans right Millennial. over it. Millennial. <laughs> I want, and I'm like, all right, yes, this is it. <laughs> I guess you do that one. What's this one? Or should we do this one? Just... Hold it up. Let us see. Yes, do that one. The red? Yeah. We'll do red. And I'm distracted and I'm coming back. Okay, so yeah, first time ever playing Blue Rose. Decided to run it, narrate it. And first time doing it on a stream, which isn't bad. I mean, it's not my first time ever GMing a game in general. But it is the first time we're doing something more homebrew based. So it's fun. Everyone's like pretty easy group. I mean, Kyle was on his best behavior. Yeah. Oh. You guys are pretty good. We didn't murder Hobo it up. That's- no. Now, what, what was we the basis of the it. scenario? Yes. What? The plot? What was your plot of this? Yes. Mm-hmm. So the plot is that in the force there's it's built upon dark sorcery so with that is like okay once in a while dark sorcerers come back and they kind of like do some like annoying stuff and this one was they were putting people in tarot cards and they're trapped in there because it's also a way for the dark sorcerers to take back their kingdom it's an old kingdom it was run by that these people like flushed them out now it's like these clan members that oversee it. And then in that forest, nothing really exists because of all the dark magic that sits deep underneath. So liches decided I wasn't going to throw liches in until you guys were like, what's over there moving? And I'm like, you know what? I was going to have one or two. I'm just going to make it more. So they don't go into that because that's just so much there. Also, liches have like 100 health. Yeah, when you said the word lich, the entire panel about shit themselves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and then with the number of seven liches, so it was with a collective pool of 700. Yeah, yeah that was... One for each day of the week. Oh, Sunday, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Carl. We could have taken them. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We could have got them. Oh, man. Maybe. So, oh, well, and then you... Well, what? So, what was your most favorite thing about doing the uh, narrating? I just like, all right, the best thing always about narrating, DMing, G- GMing is you're fully involved the whole time. As a player, when something happens with the GM, DM, and the player, that's not you, you kind of like zone out. But when you're running the game, you're like, okay, I have to be fully listening and involved in it makes it go by faster and you're more engaged so that's always my favorite part for blue rose it's definitely interesting because it's not a foundation based on fighting it's a foundation based on relationships in the community 
big hugs? Is that what this is? Oh. I think that's how it turned out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what but was the can... worst? What was the worst thing? The, <laughs> the fact that you guys decided to just trail off into the woods. I was like, no tarot cards. Focus on these. There's a notebook. Right. Right. <laughs> in it. The Sandra mm-hmm. Bullock and Keanu Reeves. Yeah, right. I thought you guys were going to try to like get the tarot cards to unleash because they were alive. I was like, yeah, so like two of them were going to be fine. The one in the middle was going to be like your main fight, essentially. Okay. <laughs> and then instead you're yeah, like, no, no I'm going to go in the woods. I'm going to throw a stick. I'm like, why? I should expect this, but you like fools. What? Yeah. Well, that's that's when you pulled the lich card out on them yeah. and that, that got their attention. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, you know what? They all go in and then we just everyone dies. Right. <laughs> right. It's okay. Murder hobo on both sides. <laughs> well, the thing about GMing is you want to give your players the the illusion that they have choices to make. You know, when actually anything can happen from either choice A, B, or C. So, yeah. you know, so you had us either way. <laughs> so you had choices. It's just you want to die now or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When do you want to die? <laughs> do you? I do need to read more up on the game because I'm not sure about because you guys did kill <laughs> even though it's a dog. If you get murder like to it or not. Obviously, if you kill a civilian, yes, you would. I think if you are playing the game for the first time with all new players, have them do a corruption role anyway, just to be like, yeah, and here's this other aspect of the game that you uh, might not know of, which is why I specifically was like, all right, with my character, I am going to go and pick a sorcery. That way I uh, have to do a corruption thing. Right. Or I plan on doing a corruption thing and hopefully something will come of that. Yeah. And the realms that you guys were in, if you stayed more like in the city part, they actually don't allow sorcery. Mm-hmm. So like even like the only the witches kind, but no one else can it's banned because it's built upon dark sorcery. So I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. So if you so, even pass it there, they could be like, end to jail. <laughs> <laughs> So, David, what did you like the most about the Blue Rose Project? Uh, well, I mean, the thing that I, I liked, uh, I liked the archetypes. The archetypes were, were really cool. The, the sort of classes and races and the levels of which add up. Uh, ex- uh, I forgot. Kyle knows more how Adept, that goes. Expert and warrior. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and just uh, just how that system, uh, uh, you know, your choices. I mean, that's the thing uh, about Blue Rose is you have a million choices, pretty much. Um, uh, the thing that I noticed, there wasn't uh, alignment, really. Is it all because it's just the corruption system or whatever? You're You're pretty much neutral, right, I think? So the premise of Blue Rose is you love the lands that you're in Mm -hmm. and i guess you could say people are more good based nature typically Mm -hmm. that your partying group and the people you're with so even though there's different continents in essence everyone wants to work together they want to keep it together your evil is the dark sorcery essentially for the most part in the book like the, the shadows and stuff the rest of it is you are knights per se right like you have that i want to protect everyone i want to keep it safe so i guess it's going to of course i was the he was the bad Uh, i was the bad person he was the person with corruption which means i was a they them yeah uh our producer can't be heard uh but apparently i was just called out for being the evil person (laughs) And, and and that brings us to Kyle. Kyle, what did you like most about the Blue Rose system? Um, I honestly like the idea of it probably the most because I don't think... Uh, um, I'll go with my first thing here first. I like the idea of the game. Uh, uh, and I think a lot of the idea of the game is 
because it is so inclusive that everyone automatically is like, oh, it's a romantic fantasy. Everyone take their shirts off. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. Is he about to do it's that? Is that what you planned on doing? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Have yeah, you played with Kyle before? Yeah, no, I did this three. earlier. Everyone's naked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, a romantic fantasy in and of itself is not all about love and all that. It's also a bit of uh, chivalry from old knighthood. Seduction. Seduction, I that? suppose. The relationships. <laughs> right. and And the idea that everyone is good. There's There has to be some temptations in there. Uh, corruption in this case um, to make the game worthwhile playing, but it's more trying to draw on that epic fantasy of knights, valor, and all of that, as opposed to gay love, lesbian love, Lavelle love, furry love, blubbery love. Uh, um, Blubbery love? Blubberly love, yeah. Walrus. Yeah. Rol- walrus sex. Well, oh, well they oh, have yeah. fur. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, Being able to play animals is pretty neat because how many games do you get to do that? And then Hey, I got to, to play that. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that was like the very first Saturday this month. Uh, Ernie played a dog. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. That's true. <laughs> you just can't play cats because Carol hates to back. That is yeah, that's a proven right. fact. That's right. Um, uh, but I was going to say uh, uh, if for those listening now and for watching, you know, if you've never actually gotten into any sort of role playing game, but you're interested in it, last Saturday was a great example of people who <laughs> had no idea what the rules were <laughs> having a good time. <laughs> Oh yeah, and <laughs> no one knew the rules. No one knew it what we were great. doing. That <laughs> <laughs> was so bad. It and worked it, out great. Yeah, it, but were, it really what? did. Here's the thing: any game you play, the rules are rules. For mm-hmm. me, and this is how I like to play, are flexible. It's all about how you want the party to go, how you want to run it, how the players want to play it, like. It's a baseline, like this is how it is. This is ideally what you should follow, but you don't have to be so black and white about it in any game. And again, just like how we play, like, yeah, we kind of knew the concepts, but everything else, yeah, it's it's Mm -hmm. how we want to do it. So folks at home, don't play Monopoly with her. Don't play Monopoly. Monopoly. Don't let her be the bank anyway. (laughs) I'm always the banker. I'm going to loan myself some money. Oh, I can buy Boardwalk. It's so weird. I try to play be a banker in real life and I like went to jail. No, just kidding. No one's so Caitlin, uh, first time in the big chair. What do you think you did well? Yeah, I'm going to put her on the spot. We're not going to hack on you. We're going to make you hack on yourself. Going along with what everyone's saying, even if you're going to be whatever, just I'm going to do this. I'm like, all right, fine. Yeah, do it. Why not? Just going with the flow. You thought what you did, did I do bad? Not reading the book fully. Hmm. There you go. That was <laughs> a long book. Though. No That's a long you. book. It's That's a, a big, yeah. big book. And but I like, mean, honestly, as a rules lawyer myself, I had a great time, even though I didn't know all the rules. And I was reading the book, trying to learn the rules as we were playing. I found out what that other colored die is for. What you know, you have two regular die and a different colored die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a drama die, and so if you like succeed, but it's really close, they tell you the number on the die. If you got a six on it, it's like you did it flawlessly. If you got a one, it's like you scraped by on the skin of your teeth. I like that. And that's all yeah. that die is for. <laughs> I actually like that. That is pretty cool. So it's now, now you vote. Go ahead, Caitlin. I was like, just having a game based on just these sixes is very bizarre to me because I've never ever played a game like that. It's always been D twenties and all the rest, you know. Not right. just one. Try tunnels and trolls. Why? What is that? D sixes, hmm. yeah, and they make a lot of solo adventures. So when your gaming group's gone, busy, whatever. <laughs> Tunnels and trolls rocks the house. Pillow fight. Always rope someone in, and if we want to put <laughs> Hannah on the spot because she is here. Well, now <laughs> we just saw headlights. <laughs> yeah, we saw Hannah move over. So Hannah, you also got to. <clears throat> excuse me, you also got to play. Uh, what did you 
think about the game itself? Um, it was fun. I mean, I liked the creativity, like the tarot cards. That was really interesting way to go. It's, um, second, it's her second time ever playing like a role playing game in general, a TTRPG. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's, yeah. Well, that's what she was just complimenting on because the tarot yeah. cards was all of Caitlin's idea. At least that's what she said. <laughs> and coming up with what was the, those new things that you came up with? The liches. Well, they're yeah. in the book. They exist. So she doesn't know anything about liches. No, but you like. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, Liches, I like, Liches cause problems. I like how her character Freya became the conscience of the party at the end. It's just like, you know, I'm the wolf. I take the final death blow on a shadow's mastiff. And you're just like, well, you just murdered somebody. <laughs> I was like, but it's a shadow. Oh, yeah. When you guys saw like the half, the ripped in half tarot card, you all immediately mm -hmm. were like, oh, no, we killed someone. Yeah. I was like, that's, that's so funny. You think that? <laughs> so Hannah, since you are kind of a neophyte player, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who wants to play but has never played and might be a little bit uh, apprehensive in doing so? Um, well, I feel like this game was very different than D and D to me, and that I just kept like I knew that it wasn't really like a fighting type of game, like it was. What is it like conversational? Um, what is it like? Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say or you could have had a conversation in D and D, yeah. but you guys took so long that you yeah. didn't get to talk to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I had all the pillars in there. It just relationship took too long. building yeah. bees. Relationship really. building bees. I liked that about that game. Um, Not that we really did that. Yes. Yeah. I like the concept. Um she just likes it because I'm just here to like give her directions. So her advice is just date someone or be friends with someone that has a little experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Get a cricket. All right. So now clearly you seem to like Blue Rose more than D and D, right? Uh, well, like I've read more about it, so I did like it. More. Okay. Well, okay. now yeah. it, do a compare contrast. So I'm a brand new player and I'm looking to get into role playing and I've got these two choices. I have this, we'll call it romantic comedy, rom-com, or we have bloodthirsty asshole pirates. Uh, what, what would you consider the major difference and what is the, why would you choose Blue Rose over D&D? Well, you don't know if she would choose Blue Rose. Well, that's true. So what? what Bam. What, what do you like about D&D &D and what do you like about Blue Rose and how do they compare contrast? Well, I like that both have like the adventure aspect, but that's like the type of game. Um, I also, I mean, if you, you said before, like the giving advice, like not really <laughs> expecting things to go a certain way and just being like open to changing the direction sort of like making a comment and it could go one way and not being like maybe I should go this way type of thing like just like being open to saying things really is the advice I would give. Now you've had the I'll say misfortune of getting lumped in with some serious seriously Psychopath. experienced players uh, again talking to a neophyte what advice would you give them, especially when it's like, okay, these assholes have been playing all their lives, clearly, and I don't really know what I'm doing. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who, you know, is a little apprehensive or a little bit daunted by that? To not be afraid? I don't know. Um, That's fair. That's a good answer. <laughs> hey, look, hold up cards for her to read up. <laughs> <laughs> and... I mean, the first time, like, I liked that there was, like, some <laughs> assistance, sort of, like, for, like, bringing, I guess it's more advice for, like, people who are bringing in somebody new to, like, uh, wrap them into the game a little bit, like, be like, hey, Hannah, like, what do, you, what do you, what do you think about that, or, like, things like that to kind of get somebody going and, like, talking, um, <clears throat> and knowing that they should participate more, type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I know with Kaylin being the 
like running that game, I was more comfortable because I like kind of knew like what I like, expect from her like individually. Analysis. Like I know her. Um, so that and, she, and she's not Kyle, so you know that's that's true. Yeah, no. She <laughs> kept her shirt on, so <laughs> true. All right. So, are you going to play a third game? Because if you play a third game, you, you know what that stuff. means. You get stuff. What kind of stuff? Get you a set of dice. We'll get you a can koozie. We'll, we'll do you up right. I would play again. like drinking wine out of a can koozie. <laughs> you just kind of have to ring it out, you know. Because as we all know, can canned wine is the best wine. <laughs> <laughs> While we're they're, doing all they're in New Jersey, they have canned wine everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say yeah, the white claw craze. <laughs> That's right. Well, we're doing all one shots again in January, so you're going to get another chance at that. So, what is the single piece of advice uh, if you could give to a new player? What would it be? Again, again. Um. Well, I'm thinking of other things like read up on the game. So you know more of like what to expect too, um, and how things might go. Um, yeah, just participate. There you go. Yeah, that's the answer I was fishing for. It was fishing. <laughs> I had to use better bait, I guess. Uh, is Caitlin there, or is she off at her pillow fight already? She's giving wine to people. Okay, I saw the H- hence, hence the horn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's coming back. Okay, so yeah, we would love to have you back again, Hannah, uh, and yeah, we'll get you in on a, another game. So give you a little bit more experience and go ahead. And the more you play, obviously, the more comfortable you're going to be, especially around this group of ding dongs, because uh, they're not an easy group to play <laughs> to be kidding with <laughs> that is i have no idea what you're what talking about you, you love heard it. all the shouting yeah that's true we, we would we will be nice so i will cut over you to tell you what you're doing wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's true so caitlin first time in the big chair uh what would you do differently it's in that read the book Okay. Uh, it's a big book. I, I would never read it. I just think it would have been nicer if I could have met with everyone a little bit before for like 30, 40 minutes. You mean green room? <laughs> yeah, but I walk in, you guys are talking about other. Well, I walk in, I'm just walking in. <laughs> As one does. Yeah. <laughs> On a Zoom meeting. Not- joining in. I'm walking in. I walk to Frank's house every day. That is a long freaking walk from Jersey. Right. And just oh, talking. Oh, you're bringing my sushi oh. down. And like kind of get a little more perspective on everyone's character, which I didn't do. I didn't do any of that. So I was like, all right, it's going in. Well, you did have a brand new system and nobody had played it before. So, you know, certain allowances had to be made. I think the most important thing that you did right was you just went ahead and went with the flow and adjusted on the stream, uh, which is what uh, I think David and Kyle will agree is the best part about GMing is uh, screw it, plan B or plan C, we will move along and just keep the pace going. So what kind of advice do you have to somebody who, eh, you know, maybe I want to try and DM, uh, David, uh, on a stream, uh, how are we going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Under the bus he goes. <laughs> yeah. We're still waiting, David. <laughs> so what my kind advice? of advice? Yep. Just, just do it. Like, All what's right. stopping you? If you're afraid of someone judging you or calling you out on something, then either take their advice or just let it roll off your back. It, it's how it is. And I don't know. It's just that you already play. You're already on the stream playing. So why not just run His it? His lady friend will kill him if he DMs for us before he DMs for her. Well, I am DMing for her now, <gasps> so I can't oh, disclaim well, it. Can do it. Come on, come on. Hannah's waiting. We need to get, get her into a third game so we can get her some dice. Yeah, yeah. Along with your 12-year-old cousin who apparently doesn't give a shit about 
being for mature audiences, <laughs> you don't tell us until the last That's minute. That's preteen hey, stuff. Like I said, I did uh, not know he was on until like, oh, okay. <laughs> did you ever Google the uh, items in Urban Dictionary that we were telling him to? <laughs> I I've yet to talk to him. So. Well, just go ahead, yeah, because you aren't allowed to. The I was thinking he got his phone taken away. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, no, are we playing Thursday? By any we chance? are playing Thursday. Okay. <gasps> wow. It's New Year's Eve. It's going to be a special. No, oh, I'm so thing. drunk. <laughs> it's eight o'clock. Don't pregame. Yeah, pre drunkards and dragons. Pre pre yeah, like, pregaming. Once at like four or five o'clock rolls in, I start drinking on New Year's Eve. A problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's decent that she waits until five. That's so true. New Year's Eve. Well, when yeah. she isn't telling you five in the Philippines. <laughs> right. Well, obviously, you didn't see the big bottle of Grey Goose she got for Christmas. So it's like, whoa. Uh, that's true. If uh, you guys can see really drunk Caitlin, come on Thursday. Maybe. That can't go wrong. Uh, yeah, that show's going to be think, oh. The bad uh, decisions I make. I'm gonna have to tell Brady right. to. Skip it is for Thursday. mature audiences, so if I do get naked, <laughs> jeez. Yes, make sure Braden's watching so that we can all be indicted. <laughs> hey, you want to come down to Tennessee? Uh, Judge says no. <laughs> Judge says no. <laughs> Yeah, there was I can't even be around kids or playgrounds in Tennessee anymore. <laughs> uh, so uh, yes, that'll be Thursday. We'll do a special thing that I haven't written yet. Have no idea. I have no idea. My ass. Yeah. See? Being just running a game, you just you just do it. That's true. Uh, well, uh, the good news, and we'll segue a little bit. Uh, any other advice uh, for new DMs, GMs, or narrators, Caitlin? If you're really nervous, just take a few shots of alcohol and you'll be okay. Yeah, alcohol cures everything. Yeah. Uh, that's the that's the theme there. Hi, my name's Frank. Hi, Frank. Uh, Kyle, uh, advice for Caitlin on her performance and future performances. Wink, no wink. hacking on her. Wow. Advice. No <laughs> hacking on her. No hacking on her. We'll hack on her in private. <laughs> I would say I think you expected us to know that the the notebook by doing the reverse dancing would free the tarot cards. I would have elaborated on that a little bit more. Other than that, though, uh, it ended up being a great game. Uh, again, you said it was your idea, so I'm going to say that's a hell of an original idea. Mm -hmm. um and in a game that's more about social than it is about combat i'm not sure on its exploration i probably would have tried to steer us towards talking to someone or people of the missing family first uh but again it was a two-hour game and Blue Rose is clearly a 17-hour session of a game. Minimum. <laughs> oh, it gives you advice on, oh, you should help people with <laughs> wedding planning. Helps like, well. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, missing people. There's a wedding I have to plan. Don't get lilies. That's terrible for a wedding. <laughs> uh, that's like part of the game is like, oh, you could do wedding planning and help people out their relationships. I was like, if I tie this into a two hour game, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> and, and, you know, that is the key is to pair out things that don't make much sense. Uh, David, how about you? What kind of advice do you have for Caitlin? Um, drink well, more. Drink more. What? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, uh, he, Read a little more, nice. I guess. <laughs> What's that? Is you're too nice. You can never be mean. Yeah, I try not to be. <laughs> Let me tell you the mistakes you made, Caitlin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, just like hold on, I've got my list right here. You got it right here. Yeah. Uh, uh. No, no. I mean, the, it, it's it's hard to to give advice on something that right I had here. no experience playing before, and you know. So, but, uh, you know, I mean, just treat it like you would like, uh, you know, any game of D&D, &D, you know, I mean, you know, just, just expect your, my advice, 
is expect your players to do exactly the opposite of what you want them to do. And Caitlin, I've, I've that's why that. we asked you here tonight. We're going to mansplain to you how to run your one shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to. Well, yeah, actually. Like... Uh... Look, Toots, uh, I'll go ahead and slowly explain this because your delicate female mind can't wrap around the violence. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't oh, pat Lord. her on the butt, so you know. Like, oh Lord! Sorry, I'm gonna turn around now. <laughs> <laughs> we turned it to that kind of show. Yeah. Yeah, that's and the, the viewership came. went up. You <laughs> wondered what DM stood for. Well, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm 55. I know exactly what it stands for. <laughs> uh, I, you know, as a watcher, he's a dominant male DM. <laughs> as a oh, as a okay. viewer. Uh, I, I noticed a rocky start, but I noticed you overcame it pretty quickly when you realized, okay, screw it. We're just going to start uh, firing into the crowd. And I really liked seeing that because that is really a difficult skill to master uh, is, oh, crap, it's it's not working out the way I wanted it to. Uh, how do I fix it? I thought, I thought your uh, repair of the game was excellent. Uh, it was only rocky for a little bit, and then you started to get into the flow of it. And I thought your core concept was excellent. And if you came up with that, that is that is kudos to you. Uh, the liches I really liked because I could hear every butthole on that show snap shut when you said it because they're like, "Whoa, hold on here," uh, <laughs> which is hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the delivery. Uh, and the concept. So I, I thought you did rather well for your first time. Okay. Is that someone's kitchen going on? It's somebody's ice. That's ice. clearly your kitchen. <laughs> it's ice. Maybe. My kitchen's definitely haunted. <laughs> House is haunted. But no, yeah, it's, it's. I guess getting like my thoughts together in the beginning, which is what you notice. And then afterwards, I'm like, ah. Yeah, just go with it. I'm probably going to sweat it out the first time I GM on this show anyway, so probably the well, same exact experience. Next it's... weekend, we got you. No, no, no. I got Thursday. <laughs> we'll anyone... talk about that when we talk about resolutions. So, Yeah. If anyone's ever done public speaking, especially for the first time, so again, like we've all played, we've streamed as players or whatever, but the moment you're running the game, it's as if you're in front of a big crowd. So we, you can have that weird anxiety of just as you do a public speaking. And it's like the more you do it, the easier it gets in general when it comes to just run. You could even be in home, not even having a camera on, right? It's just you and your friends or whoever. Everyone's focusing on you. You are basically the game in essence you're creating this world for other people so they keep looking at you for everything so it is a weird anxiety with that just say no pressure <laughs> no no but it's like as just you... imagine everyone naked yeah You've already yeah. seen me naked now you just gotta imagine frank and caitlin <laughs> hey uh, i'm that was, a, that was a rough game man <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough game you and tamlin it's it's neck and neck or butt crack and butt crack on which one causes me more nightmares. Hey, he's had more butt crack. Though. Yeah. Uh, Josh, if you're listening, you have an enormous amount of butt crack. And we all saw it on that episode. I, oh, uh, Lord. It was astonishing. Uh, That's going to be the Christmas cards next year. Oh, for yeah. Murder Hobo is everyone's butt cracks <laughs> together. It, it might have even but dropped but off but YouTube. But That's but been so long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it probably has. So, so that was Blue Rose. Uh, it is in the archive. It's still on Twitch, so go ahead and take a look at it. Caitlin did a nice job her first time out, uh, and she will continue to improve. Uh, next up, we are going to go ahead and just kind of do a mishmash of things. But first off, we're going to start off with uh, resolutions. So, Kyle, uh, this is your idea. Go ahead and uh, tell us about that. Tell us about resolutions. I was going to keep it as a final thought, you know, but... Sure. Uh, what I uh, asked these guys earlier was, you know, give a thought about gaming resolutions, what you want to see in the next year as far as uh, games go. Uh, I mean, we do the big stuff, but really that 
goes away in like two or three minutes or in Caitlin's case, 10 hours before because she started pre-gaming super early and has no idea what she's saying at that point. Uh, uh, but ideally, you know, your gaming uh, resolution lasts a little bit longer. And so I was asking these guys uh, what their gaming resolutions were. Uh, uh, and since I don't want to go first, I didn't actually think about it. Let's talk to David. David, what's your gaming hey, resolution oh, for 2021? Man. My gaming resolution is uh, to play D&D more, actually. I mean, uh, I mean, roughly I am going on... Uh, a little over the two year mark with playing fifth edition. And um, like I said, I got thrown into the deep end and I, I just haven't looked back. And it wasn't until I got a friend's suggestion to come onto the show that I actually, aside from playing with them, experienced what it was like to play D and D with other adults, you know, because I mean, cause when I got thrown in the deep end, it was just, you know, you're taking over a game for a bunch of kids in a comic book store. And I'm like, Oh crap. So, um, so since I've been on the show, I've had some experience like this is just my resolution is just to play more and probably uh, write more and eventually take, uh, take the GM seat. Thursday, uh, right? No, not it's Thursday. Thursday. Not no, Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> I'm dried up, man. I got no ideas. So it's gotta be you on Thursday. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen you write a whole thing in, in an hour, Frank. So <laughs> I've seen him write it in 15 minutes. Hey, as our producer says, <laughs> we we have not had the princess show yet. So. It is written. It is written. <gasps> is it, is it going to be a New show. Year's ball? We're, we're going to do we could. Uh, I mean, we can do it on the second. Princesses. <gasps> Real. Only if I could be Princess Jasmine if we're doing it like that. I, I already have three gens. They're like Maud, Esther. Uh, they're horrible names. Oh, Esther. Maude? There you go. You know what? Hey, I then would you're pick Maud. Princess Esther. <laughs> Maud is my little pony. I think Pinkie Pie's like sister is Maud. So I I, I'm going more off. And then there's Maud. <laughs> well, you know, Caitlin, there is the My Little Pony RPG. So if you want to sit in a seat for that, then, <laughs> you know, I'd be up, up for playing like that. I told you already which one I'd play is Derpy. So there you yeah. go. Sounds Maybe like in the future. I... I am. I actually saw a video <laughs> on it. Uh, you know, Mark Humes uh, DM for Critical Role. And I was like, you know, mm -hmm. this. it was hysterical. It was just, it was it was really funny. Someone else who does streaming, I don't know if I'm allowed to drop a name. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Beholder to no one? Beholder none? Or whatever? Oh, they're awful. Yeah. God, Caitlin, why'd you bring them up? Them? Really? I'm just kidding. We're kidding. I'm like, what? She did a few times like the My Little Pony the actual game system. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's really cool because I love My Little Pony, so... Maybe I'll buy the books and I'll read, read it, it. <laughs> and I'll, I'll run a game for that. If anyone's ever interested, I love my little pony. I mean, like right behind me is a unicorn. Yep. There you go. And I'm still just setting up my bedroom. So hey, um, Kyle's a brony. Little brony so. yeah, my little brony. <laughs> Kyle's a brony, so there you go. <laughs> uh, Kaylin, that moves us to you on your uh, resolutions. <clears throat> My gaming resolution. Gaming uh -huh. resolutions. We don't need your actual general. My resolutions is to stop Personal. drinking so much. <laughs> just, You're breaking that Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the, I'll start after Thursday or Friday. No, let's let's roll that back to Sunday. Yeah, because then the weekends here, so I got to do that. And then there's liquor sales after that. So February. <laughs> Except around I, Valentine's Day. I love Valentine's Day. It's my favorite holiday. Hold on. This is my shocked face. <laughs> then I start my job at the wine warehouse. Uh, got a, a taster. Got I a to, wait, wait, wait. I used to work for a company that did like beer tasting and stuff. So I always got free beer. I worked in it. It was I, great. They had these buckets. There. I worked in the restaurant industry. So, <laughs> oh man, just 
Yeah, lunchtime wine tastings. Yeah, those those spiral out of control. He's David like, got all the spit cups he could drink. <laughs> oh, that is so gross, Frank. Oh man, that is awful. Actually, right, okay, okay, Caitlin, what what do you want to do this year in gaming? My hopefully COVID resides as we have a vaccine and stuff, but I do plan to run in real life the vampire the masquerade so in general i want to expand more on my dm gm skills and become more i don't know persistent with running games especially a homebrew like i have a baseline obviously of the game but i want to run more of my own homebrew games i have a ton of ideas and now we just need to like get them out and do it so we it's uh stop procrastinating and start focusing on writing these out getting them together i do have a goal a personal goal of maybe getting published at least something so that's i guess my new year's resolution slash goal that works what we're Um, doing is we're going to push frank to publish the murder hobo one shot book and it'll that just have one awesome. shots of the various different that would be people. Actually and like someone would it'll better. cost thousands of dollars. Nah, and, and then someone for Frank. Frank. <laughs> How many volumes, Frank? <laughs> right now, uh, Phil Bar's over 300. Wow. Um, 400, something like that. It would be neat to have like a source book for one shots because. Typically, I feel like source books are here's a campaign you can run, not a typically here's something you could do in two hours or less. Well, if you read the Blue Rose book, <laughs> you would have seen the one shot in the back of the book. Yeah, but it's still not that short. And they do have the pre made characters you use with it, too. I know, mm-hmm. I know. But it's, it's not like you don't, if you got a whole big source book right it's it's not a bunch of one shots it is its own like campaign so i'm saying that would be neat if you had a source book and like every whatever chapter is a new thing you could run i think that's what i'm gonna do with cacophony oh okay okay so you're talking like tales of the yawning portal uh ghost of salt marsh yeah something like uh, that cobalt do press does thing? a prepared yeah 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 no, no. Uh, an anthology of one shots is what it I would was be thinking. Neat. Yeah. They well, you know, I, yeah, I, I want to do it. another uh, between the roles on the randomization. And oh. I, I think uh, I'll get my if notes. we did a couple of those, we would have more than enough uh, print ideas to go ahead and do. And I'll be happy who's going to doodle publish. it? I feel like what makes all the books is like the illustration. Uh, they do, and they're expensive because I swear to God, you need to pay your illustrators. That's why I don't you use You should them. pay them. You yeah. don't pay artists. Everyone knows that. You just, you just steal, steal it. it. Yeah, you just steal yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, their eyes were blue. I made them green. So that makes so, it so it's completely different. Yeah, it's mine. Absolutely. That's right. Kyle, New Year's resolu- or gaming resolutions for the new year. Yeah. Oh, gaming resolutions. Uh branching out from D uh, uh i'm interested in playing a little call of cthulhu uh starfinder maybe pathfinder 2 but probably not because then carol would get really smug about it so at least starfinder and call of cthulhu uh uh, uh and maybe a my little brony uh, one shot definitely playing that uh uh and then uh mostly it's probably catching up and putting a lot of one shots between me and third place runner up here uh that way i am solely dm number two of the murder hobos you're always going to be a big number two for me (laughs) yeah (laughs) wait a minute (laughs) life goals hi frank uh uh you've asked the question uh uh, what's yours yeah I mean, you uh, have a goal set out for next year. We've seen that. I was about that. to say, we've seen it. <laughs> Quite ambitious. <laughs> Front uh, and back. <laughs> uh, the, That's actually yeah. his workout routine. 
Phil, that's the uh, Phil Bar release schedule. I've got every Friday through uh, July the 2nd, 16th. I've got the first six months already planned out. Everything is written except for the Star Wars game, uh, which will feature the Mandalorian. Um, Star Wars game? That. Yeah, for May the 7th. Uh, bum, bum, the, bum, may, the, may the fourth bum, be with you game everybody liked the star wars game last time so i'll do another one this time nice. the mandalorian theme <laughs> uh but yes all of the first six months and two-thirds of the last six months are written done published mode com- finito so everything i write uh this year just gets tacked on uh which is which is good for me. Uh, this, uh, we will be starting a new con- new campaign in February. Uh, February 6th will be the first game of that. Uh, I'll be putting out the notice for those interested. We already have a lot of people, so it will be by dice cast by the producer. Uh, and that is going to be she fudges. way better than Sadellas. God, those guys were assholes. Um, <laughs> but uh, this weekend, uh, Thursday, of course, we'll do, uh, you know what? We may uh, stay in Cathaway because I do have something planned for you three, uh, which you need to get done. I think it'll be kind of fun. Uh, and then Saturday, uh, we may do the uh, uh, Princesses of Conco- or Princesses of Philbar, or we may do Cloaca in Cathaway. Um, oh no because i already did uh, the first five of well i i did i listed everything for the month of january already subject to change uh as for um, goals yeah, just keep getting better just get yeah. better uh and turn in between the rolls over to you so that you can run that shit <laughs> uh, but yeah i really do i want to do the uh random table uh because i like the iron dm kind of setting uh i like just coming up with shit on the fly i think it uh stimulates creativity and allows uh especially young dms the practice of thinking on their feet yeah so let's get you david and Caitlin on that one. Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's? and then i'll just put the uh uh random tables to you guys and you guys have to come up with an adventure on the spot uh, frank gonna... obviously you have to be there to give those two time to come up with something and we'll bring in scott Oh, there you go. We'll do, we'll do we a go. five five member party and uh, do that because Scott uh, has thrown his hat in the ring to be in the campaign. So, oh, running the campaign? No, being in it. Being in it. Oh, I don't okay. think he's ready to run the campaign. Uh, he doesn't have that kind of time. <laughs> that was what to say. <laughs> but if he does, hey, I'm I'm all for that. Uh, and if I can TPK the campaigners, maybe Kyle runs. Uh, Pathfinder 2 campaign and no, I can no, sit out and take no. no. Uh, so uh, I tell you what, I did have a resolution I forgot to mention. I, yeah, I would like to run a campaign next year, even if it's only like a 10 little session long. And I also want to write my Council of Worms campaign idea. There you go. Get it ready. Uh, I think I know a podcast that will run it. Uh, Hannah's looking to uh, the beholder one. I was about to say Caitlin's uh, pillow fight uh, podcast. Kyle, Kyle's ten episode campaign is actually us just just getting through the first encounter. So that's right, exactly. (laughs) It's a one shot, but it's the full one shot. What were you saying, Caitlin? I said the pillow fights on my OnlyFans, and it's also beholder to no one. To yeah, to none. Why I feel stupid trying to. You know what? They didn't say our names. Beholder to no one. Critical Role said our names once or twice. Man shorts. Watch man shorts if you aren't watching us. Those guys are hilarious. Uh, Let's do final thoughts since it's nine oh one. We will go in reverse order since Caitlin just put food in her mouth. Caitlin, final thoughts. <laughs> Every time. I I can see you. You know that's going to happen. I know. I know. I'm so hungry. Or we could go to Kyle. 
<laughs> no, that's okay. I'll do yeah, it. That's good. Um, whoa, sorry. Final thoughts on tonight? Yes. In general. Life is going well. Okay, okay. Not I was about to say, you just got off a coast to coast, you know, road trip. Road trip. Oh. Yeah, and now I'm moving into my apartment thing. Oh, but just remember no, to stay I... off the accelerator so much. Yeah, we saw that <laughs> post today. <laughs> Getting pulled over, going 70 in a 45. Oh, Man, that's not too bad. I've done 75 in a 25. Someone got a ticket in Arizona. Arizona does not treat speeding very well. No, they do not. That's they do my not. closing thought. You just don't speed get the boys Arizona. together and just hike them up. No, and her tits are massive. So, yeah. Oh, she don't wear stuff that shows it off. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah is like under the. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> she threw you under the bus, Hannah. You know, I don't know what to tell you. Kyle, final thoughts. They're so big. She has to go to the special store. I'm sorry. I just, I'm distracted in my thoughts. Like are a, kind of thinking a about G, something now. A G size? I mean, the whole room was that big. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. You can see that on her OnlyFans page, maybe. I don't it's her They OnlyFans. are. They are on the OnlyFans page. Okay, great. Uh, Kyle, final <laughs> thoughts. Thanks, on it. My, uh, and and give a shout thoughts. out to David's uh, 12-year-old nephew who is Googling <laughs> OnlyFans right now. <laughs> OnlyFans D, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Kyle, your thoughts. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I was logging on to OnlyFans. Wait, you here. also <laughs> asked me to come on tonight, may I remind you? We all what? I said you asked me to come on tonight. You were like, hey, Keelan. To on. discuss blue rose, not boobs, but okay. <laughs> uh what do you got? Welcome Kyle? to Murder Hobo Inc., the only place where guys don't want to talk about boobs. Damn it, we want to talk Nerds. about D. <laughs> oh, somebody said boobs. We'll all just look kind of off in the distance and not sure what to say. <laughs> Kyle, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, everyone have a happy new year and put some games in your life for next year. Watch Caitlin get shit faced. <laughs> Watch Caitlin get shit faced this Thursday. Well, okay, she'll <laughs> already be shit faced, but keep, watch her get shittier ist faced. Nice. There we uh, go. David, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. More gaming, please. <laughs> I mean, this has been uh, a great month with all the different variants, uh, different people sitting in the GM seat. So, yeah. So, Amen. <laughs> so yeah. So here's to the new year. We're looking looking forward to it. Here we go, folks. This has been Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls. Join us on Thursday for the Cacophony Edition. It is New Year's Eve, so you know you can celebrate responsibly for us and watch Caitlin spill wine all over herself, uh, or maybe boobs. Uh, we don't know. Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> I knew that one was coming. Uh, thanks, Pirate Dog Guys, for dice that uh, will hopefully kill my next group of campaigners. And of course, on <laughs> games.com, who is probably thinking, why are you discussing boobs on the RPG show? Uh, don't forget their Adventure Sense or their Shine uh, system. Uh, both are incredibly useful. Uh, again, Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Cacophony Group. Everybody wave and say goodbye. Bye-bye. Oh, long farewell. Say goodbye, Hannah. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs>